Hey everybody. Hey, I wanted to give you a little bit of a tutorial on um, working these chemical equations. If you're having a little bit of a hard time understanding what we're doing, I wanted to just break it down for you a little bit more, go a little slower. Um, and then uh, let me know if you still have questions. I'm happy to help you. All right, so the first thing is, I think I'm gonna go to separating water because water is a compound or is a substance that everybody's familiar with. And so it might be a little bit easier for you to understand what's going on here. So when we balance the formulas, what you have to remember is all we're doing is just making sure that the law of conservation is met and that we have the same number of atoms on the reactant side and on the product side, okay? Now, we, it's not that I'm trying to come at this like mathematically in a weird way. I'm just trying to say, okay, what, in order for a chemical reaction to occur, what, how many molecules of each thing do I need? And then how many molecules will I get, okay? So when we start off with water, Water has two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. Mm, let me say atoms instead. One molecule or one grouping of water has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And that makes one molecule of water, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go through and add ones for all of this. And then I'm also gonna include the um, balance. I think that visually that's going to help you guys a little bit. In nature, hydrogen does not exist just with one atom all by itself. So hydrogen is a gas and anytime that we have hydrogen gas, it always exists in a grouping of two hydrogen atoms. Okay, so one molecule of hydrogen two or H2 gas will always have two atoms in it. And then the same thing with oxygen. The oxygen, the, the gas, the air that we breathe has oxygen in it. That only exists in nature as one molecule with two oxygen atoms bonded together. So because this exists in nature, we can't just have like one random oxygen molecule or one random hydrogen molecule. Um, atom, one random um, oxygen atom just all by itself, we always have to have these one molecules with two of them together because that's what happens in nature. So if I want to separate the water molecule, H2O, and I want to separate that chemically and make two completely different substances, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, then I need to make sure that I have enough molecules to do that. In other words, it's not going to happen the way that it is right now. I have, if I just take one molecule of water, I have one oxygen and two hydrogens. There's no way that's going to separate chemically. No way. Because one molecule of hydrogen gas has two atoms of hydrogen. And one molecule of oxygen gas has two atoms. So you can see right now they're not balanced. What that means is this chemical reaction will not take place. It just won't happen. Because according to the law of conservation of mass, I have to have the same numbers on both sides. So that's where we have to say, not that I'm trying to manipulate this to make it happen, I'm trying to understand how many molecules of, ox or of water do I need in order to separate them. So, Right away, I can look and see, okay, my hydrogens are balanced. I've got two over here and I've got two over here. My oxygens are not. I've got one here and two here. So if I increase my molecules or my groupings, and I've got two groups now, two molecules of water, now my oxygen is balanced. I've got two over here and I've got two over here but my hydrogen became unbalanced because I've got four over here now and I only have two right here. So in order for this chemical reaction to take place, I need to say, okay, this is what I'm gonna have to have. Now, what will that give me? So I can come over here 
and I can say, well, if I've got four hydrogens and just do the math, I'm gonna take this number two times two hydrogen, that gives me four, that's right here. And I'm gonna take this number two and multiply that just by oxygen. That'll give me two, because two times one is two. So then I have to look at it and say, okay, now what do I do about this? Because I don't have the same numbers on either side. I need to increase and say, okay, if I have two molecules of water, when they chemically react with each other and split to make hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, what do I get? And I'm gonna get four hydrogen and two oxygen. And so in order to get four, one times two is two. I need to increase that and say, I need two molecules or I get two molecules of hydrogen, two, which is the gas. And then that's how I will make my balanced equation, okay? If you've got it, great. If not, let's do another one. I'm gonna come back here to my ammonia. And this one's different because now I'm starting with these um, reactants, and then I'm looking at my product, which is ammonia. Okay, so remember what you always have to do, start with one of each. This gives me an idea of uh, visually what I'm looking at when I say I've got one nitrogen and three hydrogen atoms in this group or molecule of ammonia. How did it get there? I've got one molecule of nitrogen, which is a gas, and it exists only in a grouping or a pair or a molecule that has two atoms in it. And I take nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas, and hydrogen again exists in nature with two automatically, okay? So I'm looking at my clues here and I'm saying I've got two nitrogen and two hydrogen. So I should have two and two over here, but I don't. So this is where I can say, okay, I know if I've got two nitrogen, I should have two over here. Let's go ahead and increase my number of molecules. Now I've got two molecules, and now my nitrogens are balanced. But what this is telling me is two plus two equals two and six. That doesn't make sense. So I have to go back and figure out how many molecules of hydrogen do I need to have in order for this chemical reaction to take place. And I have to have six hydrogen here because I have six over here. So in this grouping of two, in this molecule that has two atoms in it, how many molecules, how many groupings do I need to have? I need to have three total groupings. And so now I'm balanced. Again, it's not that I'm trying to give or take, or I'm, I'm just kind of trying to throw things to the wall and see what sticks. What I'm looking at is in order for this chemical reaction to take place, this is the formula that I have to have. It's like if you're baking a cake, you can't just sort of have the ingredients, salt, pepper, ooh, pepper, don't put pepper in your cake, salt, eggs, sugar, uh, flour, and you just throw things in, you're not gonna get a good cake. You have to put in the exact amount that you need, and that's exactly what it's like here in this chemical reaction. I have to put in the exact amount to get the exact amount so that the law of conservation is satisfied. I'm gonna go ahead and do the combust methane, okay? Again, if you've got it, you certainly don't have to watch all this video. But if you need to look again, let's just go ahead and go through combusting methane. So I'm going to start by putting one in every single one of these molecules, these groupings of molecules, because it's important that I see what I'm working with. And I can see that I've got one carbon, and I've got one carbon over here, so my carbons are balanced. My hydrogens, I've got four of them right here. And then in the product side, I've got two, one 
times two is two. Okay, so that's why I've got four and two up here. And then with my oxygen, in my reactants, I have two. And in my product, I have one, two, three. So just visually looking at this, I can see that my carbons are balanced, but my hydrogens and my oxygens are not. Now, if we just start randomly assigning numbers, it's just not going to make sense. So don't do that. Figure out what do I have to have in order to make this work, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with my hydrogens because I can see that I've got four in my reactants and I only have two in my products. And so it's easy for me to say, I need what times two will make four? And the answer is two. So I'm gonna increase my number of water molecules so that now I've got four hydrogen. See, I've got a nice balance right there. And I didn't change anything with my carbons, and so my carbons are good. In order for this chemical reaction to take place, I need to have two more oxygens in my reactant side because I end up with four oxygens in my product. So what times two will make four? And the answer is two. I hope this makes sense for you guys. Uh, I know it can be a little bit overwhelming and a little bit confusing. Um, Try to make sure that you always start with one of each so that you can look at the symbols and say, okay, what do I need to add? What do I need to have in order for this chemical reaction to take place? Okay, let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you later.